Hello dear students. Today we are going to discuss about concepts of controllability and observability. And we will be checking the controllability and observability by using two tests that is Gilbert's test and second one is Kalman's test. Let us see. What do you mean by controllability? The definition is a system is said to be completely state controllable if it is possible to transfer the system state from any initial state x of t0 to any other desired state x of td in specified finite time by a control vector u of t. So a system is said to be controllable if we it is possible to convert the system state from one state to another state. So, if you are transferring the system state x of t from x of t0 to x of td by a vector u of t, then we can say that the system is completely controllable. So, that is the definition. We are using different tests. First test is Gilbert's test, that is Gilbert's method of testing controllability. So, we are analyzing it with two cases, that means first case is that we have the system matrix A and if it, if it has eigenvalues and if those eigenvalues are distinct eigenvalues then we will analyze it as a case 1. If it has got eigenvalues which have multiplicity that means eigenvalues are repeated then we will discuss it in the case 2. Okay. So first one, first is case 1. That means the system matrix has distinct eigenvalues. We know that in the previous videos, state model of the system is represented by x dot will be equal to ax plus bu. Similarly, y equal to cx plus du. So this is the state model representation. This is the state equation. That is x dot equal to ax plus bu is the state equation. And output equation is y equal to cx plus du. In this system matrix is A. Okay. So... If this system has the distinct eigenvalues, then what is its meaning is that eh? the system matrix can be diagonalized eh? and the state model can be converted into canonical form. That is its meaning. Okay, So, we can convert this system into the canonical form, transformed state model, which is the canonical form. So, in the canonical form, you know that eh? we have given a condition that is x we are making x will be equal to mz that means the state variable x is obtained by multiplying model matrix m and z so we will obtain the new canonical model corresponding to this state model that means x state variable will be transformed into z state variable and the transformation used here is m that is the model matrix m so we will get the canonical model as z dot equal to Gramian matrix lambda into z, you can call it as lambda or gamma, whatever it is, Gramian matrix. This is Gramian matrix into z plus b cap into u and similarly y equal to that is output equation is equal to c cap into z plus d into u where u is the input and z is the state variable now. This, this is the, in the case of canonical model z is the state variable in the case of state model using state variable x is the state variable and here gramian matrix gamma is equal to m inverse am m is the model matrix and we know that in the case of distinct eigenvalues model matrix has got some form okay you should go through that uh, portions and b cap will be equal to m inverse b and c cap will be equal to cm okay so this will be the equations so we can say the necessary and sufficient condition for complete controllability is that the matrix B cap must have no rows with all zeros. That means there should not be all zero row. Okay. If any row of the matrix B cap is zero, then the corresponding state variable is uncontrollable. So the necessary condition for the controllability is that we now we have obtained M cap matrix that is M inverse B. In that M cap, B cap matrix, sorry, B cap matrix, there should not be all zero rows. That is the main condition for controllability. If there is an all zero row, then that 
state variable will be uncontrollable. So this is a case that we have dis, uh, discussed with a distinct eigenvalues. Suppose if there is eigenvalues which are repeated or eigenvalues have multiplicity, you know that in that case model matrix will be different. That means we are using Jordan canonical model. Okay. So in the case of system matrix has repeated eigenvalues, the meaning is that the matrix cannot be diagonalized, but it can be transformed into Jordan canonical form. In the previous case, matrix can be diagonalized when because it has got a distinct eigenvalues. But in the case of multi eigenvalues having multiplicity, then the matrix cannot be diagonalized. But it can be transformed into Jordan canonical form. Jordan canonical form we have discussed, okay. So, the state model, we know that in the case of state variable x, state model is state equation and output equation. State equation is x equal to ax plus bu. Output equation is y equal to cx plus du. So, y is the output, u is the input and a is the system matrix and x is the state variable. So, state model can be transformed into Jordan canonical form and here the transformation used is same that is x is equal to mz where m is the model matrix. So, the transformed Jordan canonical form is given as z dot equal to jz plus b cap u y equal to c cap z plus du. Here j is obtained by the transformation m inverse am. There may be a doubt that here also j is m inverse am and here also this Gramian matrix is m inverse am. But you know that in this case eigenvalues are distinct. So, model matrix is obtained with the Mm, one form of matrix but in the case of multiplicity of eigenvalues the mo model matrix is obtained by another model matrix is obtained in another method or it uh, it should have different value okay so both the model matrices are different okay so j will be different because here the model matrix will be different form j is equal to m inverse am and b cap will be equal to m inverse b and c cap is equal to zm so, the equations are same but the model matrix will be different, okay. So, in this case, the system is said to be completely controllable. If the elements of any row of B cap that correspond to the last row of each Jordan block are not all zero and the rows corresponding to other state variables must not have all zeros. So, this is the condition. First of all, we have to analyze this Jordan matrix. So, we have to analyze B cap based on the elements in the B cap, we can predict the controllability. So, here the condition is that the elements of any row of B cap that correspond to the last row of each Jordan block are not all zero. That should that means in the case of Jordan, we will get B, B cap matrix in that there will be a Jordan block and in that Jordan block there should not be all zero rows. That is the condition for controllability in the case of uh, eigenvalues are multi, um, multi there will be uh, same eigenvalues okay so this is the cases that we have analyzed by using Gilbert's method of testing for controllability so next we will go to Kalman's method of testing controllability okay so let us see the Kalman's method of See, the definition of controllability is same, but the test is different. Here, Kalman's method of testing controllability is given that. We know that the state equation is x dot equal to ax plus bu for the system. And here, we will form a matrix qz. That is, qc will be formed in this manner. See, qc will be equal to b, a, b, a square b, a, n minus 1, b, a raised to n minus 1, b. That means first of all we have to form this composite matrix QZ. This is composite matrix QZ. It is formed by using this B, A like that. Okay. So first element will be B matrix. Second element will be product of AB matrix. Third element will be equal to product of A square B matrix. Like that it will go. And this is the composite matrix. And where N is the order of the system. And that means the order will be determined by the number of state variables. So, how many state variables are using here? That is the order of the system. In this case, the system is completely state controllable if the rank of the composite matrix QZ is n. So, we should know how to calculate the rank. So, if the rank of this QZ matrix is n, then we can say that 
the system is completely state controllable so we should know how to calculate rank for a matrix so the rank of a matrix is n if the determinant of n by n composite matrix q z is non zero suppose if this is an n by n matrix and we are calculating the determinant of this matrix and we find that it that result of determinant is non zero then we can say that the rank of this matrix is n okay if it is not equal to zero if sorry if it is equal to zero then we can say that the rank is not n okay so then if the n by n matrix has got the determinant value which is not equal to zero then we can say that the rank of the matrix is n and also when that rank is equal to n then we can say that the system is completely state controllable okay so that is a um, kalman's uh, test for controllability and uh, we can say that the condition for complete state controllability in the s plane sometimes we may be given by a transfer function so we can define the controllability in the s plane as a necessary and sufficient condition for complete state controllability is that no cancellation of poles and zeros occur in the transfer function of the system and if cancellation occurs then the system cannot be controlled in the direction of the cancelled mode so the when we are given a transfer function we should ensure that for the controllability the necessary and sufficient condition is that no cancellation of the poles and zeros occur in the transfer function of the system okay so this is all about controllability next we have to define observability and we will be in the case of observability we have two test that is gilbert's test and kalman's test for ensuring the observability so first of all we can define observability what is observability a system is said to be completely observable if every state x of t can be completely identified by measurements of the output y of t over a finite time interval so if the input state x of t is identified by measuring the output y of t over a finite time interval then we can say that it is the observability or the system is observable and first we will discuss the gilbert's method of testing of observability here also the procedure is same let us see we will have a system nth order system and it has got the state model x dot equal to x plus bu and the output equation is y equal to cx plus du and here first of all the state model can be transformed to canonical or jordan canonical form, form by using the transformation x is equal to mz if the eigen values are distinct then it will be transformed to canonical form if the eigen values are have a multiplicity then it will be transformed to jordan canonical form so the transformed state model can be written as in the case of distinct eigen values that is z z dot equal to gramian matrix into z plus b cap into u y equal to c cap into z plus du and here you know that gramian matrix is equal to m inverse am similarly b cap equal to m, m inverse b and c cap equal, equal to m inverse z sorry uh, c cap equal to c into m okay Now, similarly in the case of jordan matrix if the this eigen values have a multiplicity that means eigen values are repeated then we can transform this this state model into jordan canonical form its equation is given by z dot equal to jz plus b cap u y equal to c cap z plus du here the state variable is z and u is the input and here j is called jordan matrix and it is obtained as j will be equal to m inverse am so we can Uh, this uh, the, by this way we can found the different models or we can transform the state model into canonical form or jordan form next we have to ensure the testing whether it is observable or not so the necessary and sufficient condition for com complete observability is that none of the columns of matrix c cap b zero if any of the columns of c cap has all zeros then the corresponding state variable is not observable so the condition necessary and sufficient condition for complete observability is that we will have a matrix c cap right and we should go to the column of that c cap that means none of the columns of c cap should be zero that means all columns will be should be non zero then the system is called observable 
and if any of the column is zero all zero then we can say that it is not observable okay in the previous case in the um, that means in the case of controllability we will be analyzing b matrix b cap matrix right okay we are analyzing b cap matrix but in the case of observability we are analyzing c cap matrix okay so here in the case of b cap matrix for controllability all zero uh, there should not be all zero row okay but in the case of observability we are analyzing c cap matrix and here the condition is that columns should not be all zero okay so that is the condition that is the difference between controllability and observability test and similarly we can make a kalman's test for observability let us see in this case also as we discussed in the case of controllability we have to form a composite matrix qc and but the, here the entries are different so we let us see the state model can be represented as a state equation x dot equal to ax plus bu and output equation is y equal to cx plus du let us form a composite matrix qc but the, the entries of this composite matrix is c transpose a transpose into c transpose a transpose square c transpose a transpose cube c transpose etc where n is the order of the system and n is also equal to the number of state variables in this case the system is completely observable if the rank of the composite matrix qz is n and the rank of the matrix is n if the determinant of n by n composite matrix is non zero so here the condition is same that means we should ensure the rank of this matrix is n okay rank will be n only when the determinant of this qz matrix will be not equal to zero but here the only difference from the previous case is that here qz entries are different in the previous case you can see that the entries are b a b a square b right here we are taking c c transpose a transpose c transpose like that so compare both the cases that is controllability and observability and study it then it will be easier for you and in the examination um, pattern uh, sometimes the, um, it is asked to state the kalman's test and gilbert's test and also uh, you are asked to check the controllability of a uh, state equations okay so it will be clear when you are doing problems uh, so now we have a condition for complete observability in the s plane the necessary and sufficient condition for complete observability is that no cancellation of the poles and zeros occur in the transfer function if cancellation occurs the cancelled mode cannot be observed in the output that is similar to the previous case so in the next video we can do problems so the um, things will be clear uh, more clearer for you so uh, go through the portions if you have any doubt you can ask me okay thank you